That's the thing I'm worried about. All right, we're getting we're getting on here a little early, but just wanted to make sure that every you know I know we got one person in here, so uh, I'll kind of give some time to uh, allow some other people to join. But uh, if you would drop a comment down below, just let us know, make sure everything looks good, sounds good, and then we get started here. Interesting. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> All right, guys. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. New. So, go ahead. Sorry, we <laughs> sorry we are getting on here late. Um, we spent the entire day fishing Crooked Creek today, and so it was it was an let interesting him, day. <laughs> let them know what Crooked Creek is. Um, so Crooked Creek is a local creek around here. It um, merges into the White River. And we are used to seeing a lot of smallmouth bass in that yeah. in that creek. Um, we know that there are largemouth bass. We have rock bass in there. Um, we found a trout today. Yeah. Caught the first trout in probably 20, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, 20 years. Uh, 20, 25 years. Actually, 25 years. It was, I was 19. So the section that we did on Crooked, we we started out at what we call George's Cove or George's Creek. Yeah, it's Wilson uh, Wilson Access, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Will, uh, and then we went down to Kelly's Access or Kelly's Slab. Yeah. And uh, the the trout that uh, I was talking about, we caught that maybe. Man, um, but we hadn't even left yet. A few, no, few hundred, had. few hundred yards down the mm -hmm. down the creek from uh, Wilson's access. Uh, so I, I was surprised. I was surprised, to say the least. But uh, go ahead and talk about your catch because that was kind of the you were kind of the star of the day there. Well, he caught he caught the rainbow trout, which was really interesting, and then he also caught two rock bass. Um, we've seen largemouth in Crooked Creek, and. Um, it was interesting because the first one I caught, we were probably like four or five hours in and I caught one and I just was surprised it was a, lar a large mouth. And maybe an hour later I caught another one. And so it was really interesting because I managed to stay on the same fish, which were the two large mouth. And he, he got um, a trout and two rock bass and mm -hmm. neither one of us caught a small mouth. <laughs> Yeah, and the uh, the one that you caught, the that was the last one. Was that almost just a hair under thirteen inches? Yep. Which for we're talking about really skinny. Those of you that don't know, I'm talking about a, we're talking about a local creek and river here. It's really skinny water. Um, it was kind of low. We wasn't expecting a whole lot, which we got what we was expecting. Uh, the water is still a little chilly for the bite, but we didn't really see a lot of life. Um, that's normally what I would call. I wouldn't say world class, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty premium smallmouth fishery. So, uh, you know, and, and obviously it, it runs a pretty decent, uh, decent ways, but it's not something you could float the entire thing, but we like to do certain sections of it. What's going on, guys? Appreciate you guys dropping in. We're just kind of getting started if you're just joining us. So, uh, talk, we spent most of the day fishing and uh, kind of, uh, you know, really exploring. I mean, we, we were both kind of wildlife lovers. We probably saw one of the biggest bald eagles that we've seen in a long, long time. And that's saying something because bald eagles are very plentiful around here because we have a really, really widespread trout fishery here, uh, skinny waters, two really large lakes, and there's bald eagles everywhere here. Um, I've got some video of it. I, I, I wasn't really, I didn't have the GoPros on or anything, but we had kind of a, 
uh, just we stopped and just watched it. And it was a juvenile bald eagle sitting up on a branch and a really large adult uh, chased him off of that. branch. So we were right under it. And it was just it was just really just breathtaking. Um, <clears throat> 19. Where are you from, New? <laughs> we, we'd say it was cold today, but not compared to 19. Um, we were in the... It was 40. It was low 40s this morning, but we got up to probably about upper 50s. Um, it's been... and I, Yeah, Pennsylvania. Um, it's been odd, but I think it's been odd everywhere this year. Um, and again, we're in... Um, I mean, we're in March, so it's not like it's extreme, but it's still, uh, we had some 70 degree days in December. We've had some negative degrees in, you know, January, February. It just, the weather still hadn't quite figured out what it's going to do, but I think we're supposed to be getting uh, quite a bit of rain tonight and tomorrow. Um, that's going to do wonders for our, our waters around here. Um, but We really don't. Um, buffalo. Yeah. We, we, we're we mainly on the buffalo and on crooked. Um, nothing against the white. Uh, we're just not much for trout fishing. Uh, there's no real reason behind that. But uh, I, we really like being on the buffalo mainly for the scenery. And, you know, obviously the fishing is really good. Um, not much of a fly fisherman. Uh, we did catch a trout today, but it, you know, it's still, it's not something I'm typically targeting. We're both largemouth bass lovers. We both spent a lot of time on the lake, but we've really been in the, uh, really been in the rivers here lately. So smallmouth fishing and just minimalist designs. Um, so before we get into the tournament site, you know, the, the, what we're here for, uh, you got an announcement to make, you got a new kayak. I did. <laughs> um, I decided that it was time. I love, love my U-Pick. Um, but the U-Pick and the Lynx kind of, for me, carried the same niche. And so I decided to get rid of the U-Pick and decided to get a bona fide RVR 119. Mm. And I took that thing out today. I'm still, today was really about learning how I want that boat set up. Um, it was interesting. I've never done so many 360s in my life. <laughs> um, it was getting used to it, but it was just, it was so nice um, going down. And I mean, he's in a, he's in a tripper and I was in the RVR and it was just, I did not feel like I was uh, exerting that much more effort than you today, yeah. uh, which is a little different. And I mean, I've tried, I've tried rec kayaks. I've tried a lot of different things. And I mean, him and I were talking about this when I was thinking about what I wanted to do next. Um, I kind of made the decision to, to get rid of the U-Pick and then didn't know what I was going to get into. Kind of looked at the skiff, kind of looked at the RVR and decided to go with the RVR. And I mean, like I said, still trying to figure out how I want to set it, set it up. That was kind of my downfall today. <laughs> I caught my own rod a couple of times, <laughs> <laughs> caught the handle on my boat a couple of times. Um, so, but so what, what was your favorite part about it? What was your favorite part about the kayak? Man, the maneuverability of that thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went, we went over shoals. They're not, you know, it's not white water. Um, but I just didn't feel like I had to exert all that much effort. Yeah. And, you know, I'm used to really solid primary stability. Um, and the RVR is not the you pick and stability in terms of primary, but that secondary man, when that yeah. caught, and I mean, there was one time that I kind of leaned over a little too far <laughs> and that secondary caught and I literally was going nowhere. And so that was kind of nice, but just, just the ability to literally turn around after a shoal and get into areas that I couldn't get into before yeah. was really nice in a fishing kayak. Cause I've done it in wreck kayaks, but I just don't, I do not want to wreck kayaks. I want to fish. Yeah. So that that's a really good point, though. So and that's kind of what I was hoping you were going to say. But the stability. So uh, the somebody asked me on one of the podcast episodes I did was, what is the number one most asked question you get at the store? And it's how stable is this? Um, stability is kind of a tricky thing. There's a sweet spot, in my opinion, and just personal preference. 
there's a sweet spot with stability. You can go too far under it and you can also go too far over it. So people are always looking for that stability. And depending, if you're looking for something for skinny water, for rivers, for a little bit of moving water, even slow moving rivers and creeks, nothing crazy, uh, you can go too far on the stability and you can really find yourself getting more of a workout than you than you intended on. Um, you want something, I, and me, again, I'm, and I say, I don't mean you, but me personally, I like something a little bit loose, something I can, uh, I don't feel like I'm going to fall out of all the time, don't get me wrong, but uh, not like something, I don't want to feel like I'm paddling around the dock or anything. And what she's got into here is the Bonafide RVR 119 and good stability, very good stability but it, they don't go too crazy on it like you see on the SS series. So uh, it was just, it was nice seeing her out there. Um, you know, she's used to paddling around a lake kayak and she has a pet, her pedal drive, but being in a, something that is uh, really made for what she's wanting to do and then kind of seeing her, you know, run around on it. She got a little frustrated early in the trip and there wasn't a whole lot biting. And then, uh, you know, to her credit, uh, another good lesson for especially people just getting into kayak fishing or just fishing in general is just staying patient, staying positive and keep throwing that lure. Uh, I think the turning the turning point for me on this trip also was um, he's fishing and I just was floating for a split second. And um, what I ended up in was I saw a mink and that kind of gave me a revived sense. I've got mocha here. <laughs> um, so that kind of gave me a revived sense of seeing that mink hello. was, was super Say cool. Hello. And then we saw the Eagles and then it was after that, that I kind of got back into it. But we also, at that point, we're kind of getting into the evening feed as well for them. And I think that was the other big thing. Good point there, Bobby. Um, the drag <laughs> chain is great on white river. Um, I was running that six pound, uh, that six pound radial anchor on, uh, comes from Anchor Wizard. It's a little acorn, uh, and you may remember those, but a uh, little six pound anchor, really compact. Uh, they sell them on the Bonafide RVR uh, Anchor Wizard kits. And that thing is just amazing. It just sits in the palm of your hand. It's six pounds, it's coated, um, just really small package, really heavy weight. Anything uh, above that, I think is a little too much. Uh, and anything below it, you know, you might be dragging it around a little bit, but don't have to worry about getting it caught on anything. Don't have to worry about anything like that. So, and that, that is one thing that I learned today because I saw him using his and I'm, I'm a little slow to try new things because this whole, the whole fishing thing is relatively new to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I saw him with his anchor and I'm like, you know what? I, so I kind of hung up with him for a little while as well today. And another thing too. So, um, you know, this was her first time getting her new kayak wet. So we kind of learned a little bit about it, uh, you know, especially her uh, being on it. But, uh, you know, taking it out a couple of times and really getting into how you want it set up, what you'd like, what you don't like about it, and not necessarily about the kayak, but your organization. So uh, and this is something that I tell a lot of people in the shop, especially if they've never done it before and they have no idea because a lot of times they'll, someone will buy a kayak and they'll ask, what do I need? And a lot of times I'll tell them, take it out a couple of times, then you're going to know what you need or what you want. And it just, it really saves you from just buying a truckload of accessories and maybe using a third of them or loading something up and then realizing at the beginning of your trip, I really don't need all this. So she had a couple of rods with her, a couple of Plano boxes really, but the even the couple of rods, just knowing how she wanted it to set, uh, she was wishing she had her Black Pack Pro behind her. But then I was kind of telling her, it's like you don't want, especially on rivers and creeks, your rods to stick straight up because of the branches. And just kind of really getting into, really growing into your boat. Uh, so, but we'll go ahead and get into the, the, the topic here today. Uh, just kind of segue, just telling you all about our day here. So talking about kayak tournaments and should you fish them. Now, some of you may already be experienced in kayak fishing tournaments. Some of you may even organize kayak fishing tournaments. But a lot of people out there, um, maybe they're on the outside looking in or kind of on the fence about it. And I'm not talking about overall because they're, 
they're groups of people. So you're going to have some really good. You're going to have some, you know, that aren't so good. And, you know, some in the middle there. Uh, and, you know, your kayak fishing tournaments are necessarily that they're necessary for the for the uh, for the business, for, you know, for the overall scheme of things. It's kind of it's a friendly competition. It's a little different than what you see. Uh, I'm, I'm a, you know, I, again, I grew up, I was a jock. Um, I'm very competitive minded and kayak fishing tournaments to me are really more about community and really more about uh, fellowship and just getting together and, you know, maybe talking some smack with your friends, but, uh, and I'm talking about our local groups here. So we've got a couple of local groups that are phenomenal people and great ambassadors for the sport. No matter where you're at, if you've got, you've probably got some Facebook groups out there or some local tournaments, just meeting those people is going to tell you a lot about what experience you're going to have with that group. And I just say that because Arkansas has some really great groups. They've got a couple not so great ones. Um, and just just from the attitude to of the people in it, maybe you got a group that maybe takes it a little too seriously and there's nothing wrong with that. But for someone getting into it and beginning, that can be very intimidating. And it can really just kind of put a bad taste in your mouth where you show up and you've got maybe a budget friendly kayak and a paddle and you get in here and you see all these guys with motors and live scopes and all that. And a lot of people just get um, a little intimidated, not that they're afraid of anything, but you know, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you feel like you might be in a little bit over your head. Um, and I'm going to go off and say something about that because mm -hmm. when we started and, and who Zach is referring to is Twin Lakes Kayak Anglers. That's actually who we started yeah. with. Great people. Um, and shout out also to Northeast. Northeast Arkansas, Arkansas Kayak Anglers. Yeah. yeah. So these two groups have kind of, mer they kind of merged together on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that when we started with Twin Lakes, it was, you know, he was already working at OMTC. They invited him out. He brought me out. We were both in paddle kayaks at that time for that first tournament. Um, I know I was in my U pick. I don't remember what you were in. I think you were in your. I was in a new canoe. Yeah. He yeah. was in a new canoe and they had people in Hobies. They had people in. Um, we had a Pelican out there. We had, yeah. We had a Pelican out there. We yeah. had somebody with trolling motors. We had us that were, you know, paddling. And the cool thing about it was it didn't matter the setup. Everyone was involved. And it was great because we just, we truly had fun. I don't think I caught anything on that one. <laughs> you, did. You, caught, you caught one the first one. You caught one. Yes. That yeah. was on the chatter bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just remember the wind. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. wind is kind of what made us kind of think, um, maybe trolling motors, maybe pedal drives, you know? Yeah. Um, but the whole point was we actually just had a really great time with them. Yeah. And that's kind of how we how we got started into it. And I mean, him and I have heard a lot about um, people who are in these groups and the groups aren't necessarily wel welcoming to newcomers. We have never had that experience. And so we've been really, really lucky with that. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, we kind of knew, um, again, the store I work at. Um, you know, we, we sponsor some of their turn, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll donate gift cards and things like that. And, uh, it, so we kind of knew what we we're getting into. Um, me personally, if I'm in a tournament that I'm giving something to, I don't like taking from it. So usually I'm just literally donating my fee. And then, you know, if I, if I win something there, I just tell them to throw it on the next one. But, you know, uh, you have some of them that are, uh, are, are, you know, smaller groups. You have some of them that are huge groups and are very organized. I know here in the South, they've got some travel teams that they started last year. Um, I mean, again, there there's different variations of, uh, of of competition and participation you can get into. Bassmaster does their own kayak tournament series now. Um, everyone knows Chad Hoover does the KBF tournament series, um, and and again. You know, when you get that big in the sport of kayak fishing, I mean, there's some people that love them, some people that don't love them so much. But he's done. More, Chad has done more for the sport of kayak fishing than I think anybody out there. And KBF, I've been uh, a KBF member for a while, and I fish some of their tournaments just for fun. I kind of find a hard time uh, donating enough time and, and energy to getting 
into a full tournament series, but every now and then I'll kind of show up on some, but, uh, but yeah. Um, we, and we've got some, again, uh, we have state championships. Uh, the state championship for Arkansas was won by, uh, by a woman that really, she's, she's a, she's just a hammer anyway, but, uh, Again, it's really nice seeing the ladies get into it, because um, again, it's not um, it's 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 not a weightlifting, it's not a powerlifting competition. It's finesse. It is uh, just knowing what works for you, what you're confident in, and it doesn't matter what kayak you're in, obviously. But you know, depending on what you're using, if you're using the electronics, if you're using a motor, all that, uh, you know, obviously there's kayaks that handle that. Uh, you can see Matt here. Bought his first kayak this year, a New Canoe Unlimited. That's a great first kayak. Um, I owned one for a little over a year, mm -hmm. and part of me regrets getting rid of it. Uh, it, it. That's a great, great setup. I think I've put, I think I've done builds. I did a build on the YouTube channel here just a few days ago. I just uploaded it. Um, I've done probably, I think, four of those this year so far. So those have become really, really popular. I think the bona fide PWR 129 is going to be very, very popular once people get kind of more hands on and uh, see that out and about. But the new canoe unlimited, I think that's it's uh, I'm sure it's not the biggest selling kayak in the kayak fishing industry, but it's up there. It is definitely up there. Yeah. Um, Carl, the, the 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 new canoe U10, I think it I think it, it can be a great tournament rig. It depends on what you want to do with it. Um, you can motorize it. I just did a pedal drive setup for a guy on a U10. I thought it looked fantastic. Um, the U10, I think, and I've, I've got a, uh, I've got an on the water video that I'm editing that will probably be coming out here probably Tuesday or Wednesday. The U10 is a great kayak. The 12 and a half foot version, the original version is probably going to be a better open water kayak, better lake kayak. It's not the, the U10 is not the best tracking kayak in the world, but it's got a niche that it fills very, very well. It's great utilizing, uh, great at utilizing the space that it has. The U10 is actually more of an 11 foot kayak than a 10 because technically it's 10 foot, 10 inches. Um, I think that's not too short. The Frontier 10 series, I thought was a little too short and it was a little, little bit more on the sluggish side, but I, I spent an entire day in the new canoe U10 and I absolutely loved it. But again, depending on what you want to do, if you're going to motorize a U10, honestly, you're going to want to rudder with it. I'll just say that, um, you know, it, and it does draft in some really shallow water, which I think is the reason why a lot of people will buy that kayak. But for that same reason, if you get into some high wind, it can drift you around quite a bit. And I did have experience with that. Yeah, that was that was fun watching you get. Yeah, but I had around. an anchor. So if you got an anchor, that's going to solve that problem. But yeah, if you don't have an anchor and you're out there, you get some wind, you're going to be doing some traveling. So. Yeah, and and Crescent makes a decent kayak. I know we we both did the um, the Crescent Sholey versus the Bonafide RVR. Um, we there was things that we really liked about the Crescent kayak, and but there was things that we ultimately liked a little bit more. And again, that's personal preference, and that's one thing I think sometimes it gets lost a little bit in my videos is I'm going to go over pros and cons to everything that that I offer, and then obviously when I'm you know when I'm reviewing a kayak that we don't typically handle again, it's personal experience, personal preference, but, uh, but yeah, Crescent, uh, Crescent are very lightweight. Crescent are very, very maneuverable, but they do tend to be a little bit on the tippy side. And that's kind of what I was talking about. I personally, I have a sweet spot for stability, not too low, not too high on stability. To me, it was a little bit too low and the kind of water that we're on, on rivers and creeks, it does tend to be shallow. You're going to be hitting some rocks. I felt like the Crescent kayaks can handle that, but if I'm hitting some of those rocks, you're going to get a little bit of that tip. Um, we run into that pretty good today. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a rock that I didn't see and it kind of got me sideways a little bit, but didn't tip. But again, it kind of took me by surprise there. And if I was in that, that Sholey, I probably would have been in the water. Uh, yeah. I went, I went over one and I went from being straight to doing this number Yeah, on the RVR. Um, 
I will say something because we, we keep talking about stability. And I actually made this comment to him today. Um, my definition of stability and his definition of stability are going to be different. Yes. And that is one thing that I think is people need to understand is I can feel really stable. Like I feel really stable in the RVR. Is it my U pick? No, mm. it's not. But I still feel stable. And I was telling him, I'm like, we, I don't drive a motorcycle. I just kind of go with him. And I kind of told him, I'm like, you know, honestly, being comfortable with that kind of movement is having to follow him and his movement on a motorcycle is almost similar to the way that it is on a kayak. Yeah. And so that's the thing is I'm just always kind of thinking about, okay, well, if I'm going this way, then I need to, you know, kind of auto correct. And it becomes really natural after a while. So stability is something that can be tricky just because it depends on the person. First kayak size for an 11 to 12 year old kids for back bays or lakes. I would go 10 personally, um, depending on how tall the, the kid is. Um, 10 foot is going to, go. <laughs> yeah, 10 foot is definitely going to give them room to grow into it. And, you know, maybe if they get some experience in it. Uh, you still want to have something that's going to paddle well because they're going to be paddling it and they're not going to be, maybe, maybe they don't have as much horsepower as me and you do, but, uh, yeah, give them something easy paddling. Perception kayak makes a great, uh, you know, great lighter weight kayaks, you know, the Pescador 10, the Pescador Pro 10, uh, if they want a, like a frame seat, but they're going to be able to grow into those and they're not going to, the kayak's not going to be worthless to them in a couple of months. Uh, depending on how big they are, they may need to grow into it a little bit. Uh, so you don't want to go too big on it. Uh, they, they sell some nine and a half footers out there and those are fine. Just typically when you're talking about fishing kayak, you want a little bit more room to carry stuff, you know, maybe give them a, a milk crate for, to carry some tackle and a couple of rods, but, uh, 10, a 10 foot, I think is the sweet spot on that. There's a venture out to other states with rivers. What platform are you good for someone as you can use? I mean, New Canoe makes a really great river kayak called the Flint. I feel like the Flint is also a decent uh, lake kayak. It's not going to be as big and wide as the Unlimited, but it's very fast. Um, and when you're talking about skinny waters like rivers, uh, again, you want something that paddles well, that maneuvers well. When you get into, you know, there's a lot of bends in a lot of these rivers, like the one we were on today. And a lot of times you don't really see what's necessarily ahead of you very far. So when you get to something, it's good to have something you can paddle around and maybe make a quick decision. Uh, Bonafide RVR 119, in my opinion, is the best river fishing kayak for paddling. Uh, New Canoe Flint is a close second for me. They've made some changes on that kayak and it is so that <laughs> that's exactly what I was fixing to get to. That's a very good point because the uh, but for 2024 they've actually lowered the seating position, mm -hmm. so it's more of a lower seating position, and the back end of it sits back a little bit, so it gives you some really good uh, support on the backs of your legs. I have not taken that out, and that's definitely on the list for this year. But we um, we had somebody that bought a a, a U10. Uh, you know, the unlimited 10, he bought one of the first ones we had in there and he actually brought it back and got a Flint. So he said he preferred the Flint because it felt like he can cut through the water a lot easier. And obviously it does take some getting used to if you're used to a lake kayak, but the lower seating position on the Flint, in my opinion, is something that was really, really needed because it did feel tippy because it's not a wide kayak. It's a little bit of a rounded hull underneath it and you're sitting up a little bit higher. We, we should also mention with the customer that he's talking about, his wife actually has a yes. flint in the higher seating position. And he did tell us that that lower seating position made it feel like a completely different kayak yeah. just because he was lower in it and didn't feel as the center of gravity basically yeah. just got lower. Yeah, and he he actually had the, um, on his Unlimited, he actually had the seat lowering kit. Uh, it, he, had a, he had a 12 and a half foot Unlimited. But, uh, but yeah, that's... I'm definitely, um, I definitely expect it to be more stable, but again, it's not going to be as stable as the U10 or the Unlimited or the Frontier series, but man, that Flint is fast. Um, it's not quite as fast as the Pursuit, and I know the Pursuit is something, 
I think that's one of the new canoe kayaks that really gets overlooked, but a lot of times people overlook it because of the sheer length of it. So it, it's great. Uh, it's a great kayak for lakes, but quite frankly, the, the unlimited has kind of dominated the lake scene since that, that kayak came out. Um, and then with the, with unlimited, with them doing a 10 foot version now, I really think, um, I'd be surprised if new canoe didn't discontinue the frontier series, um, uh, moving forward. Um, I haven't heard anything of course, but. Um, that's a good question. Uh, so we're inland here, of course, but the, I think the PWR, um, I took it out and I loved that kayak. Um, and I think offshore, you're going to really like it for the rudder. So, but again, it's not a, it's not a skinny long kayak. So it is a little bit of a barge, but it does plane across the water really nice. If I'm going on offshore again, you know, it's going to, it's not going to paddle as well as some of your longer touring kayaks. Uh, but man, that thing very, very stable. Uh, it's going to be similar to the Slay, uh, native Slayer Max 12. The, the, <laughs> the, the Max 12 is going to be, I don't know, maybe the, the Slayer Maxes and the Titans are just phenomenal on stability. Uh, but I definitely wouldn't want to, uh, I definitely wouldn't want to paddle those. Uh, paddling the PWR was kind of a surprise for me as far as how well it moved through the water. Um, it didn't feel like it was a wide, heavy kayak. And the foot control rudder steering, I just, that's that's the closest thing to a hands-free experience. And worst case scenario, you could throw a little motor on it, be able to steer it, and then really just a true hands-free experience, obviously. But I think it'd be fine. Um, you know, 500 pound weight capacity. I know Bonafide does the, uh, you know, taking the, the boat weight off of the, but that's still on paper. The PWR has a higher weight capacity than the Titan X does. So uh, because the Titan X being uh, 172 pounds. So. Yeah, that thing's heavy. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> we, we've moved a few of those this week. What's going on, Tyler? Well, we got to, Tyler, we got to get you on a program and we got to, uh, we got to get your wife to kind of cut down the, uh, the calorie intake there, man. <laughs> yeah, Newport, uh, Newport 180. Uh, they got the Newport. They got the NK300 now. That's a three horse electric outboard motor. Um, it's 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 pricey, but everything comes with it uh, except the battery, obviously. Which I like the Newports. Uh, it's the same thing with the 180. Newports, you can you can use your own battery. You don't have to use their own little power pack like Torquedo does or anything like that. So. Yes. There, a lot of people really like the tarpons. Mm -hmm. Whenever we get used tarpons, those things go really quickly. Yeah, um, we could run a business off just tarpons probably. Um, they're, I mean, they, they are, they are a great kayak. They, um, they definitely are a little more wreck in mind. Yeah. You can definitely fish out of them, but they're a little more wreck in mind. Seats are lower mm -hmm. into the kayak as well. So if you like a lower seat position, that's, that's something that we, realize is a little different about us. We kind of like the higher seat position. Um, the tarpon is that lower seat position. And when I first started kayaking, I actually preferred that. Um, being on the RVR today, what I realized really quickly was I liked being higher up because all the things he couldn't see, I could. <laughs> yeah. So like some of those rocks and he was talking about some of that man maneuverability. And I know the tarpon has the same maneuverability because I've been in a tarpon before. Mm -hmm. And, um, the one thing I loved today was we'd be going in the middle of the shoal and I could see a rock coming up and I'm going straight toward it. And the RVR was just literally could just like skirt right around it. And it was super easy, um, to do. And I know the tarpons have the same ma maneuverability in, in that regard. They're just a lot more wreck in mind. Yeah, and uh, this one here. So going from a, a lure thirteen five to uh, an unlimited, you're that's a night and day difference. Um, Frontier twelve was my first fishing kayak, and I loved it. But man, the unlimited, it's just it it does it feels like a totally different craft. My favorite thing with the unlimited versus the Frontier twelve was easily that back handle, uh, the oh, back yeah. handle being a metal handle versus that little T handle with the rope. Um, 
I, it, it makes it feel like a lighter kayak, even though it's not. That, that's both of our favorite features, by the way. <laughs> um, I don't believe they do. Um, Salem Springs has kind of merged into the bait and tackle shop next to it there. Um, I'm sure we could, it, they probably could, but honestly, uh, the OMTC location there in Garfield's like 40 miles away. Garfield will be your best bet for rigging. Uh, there's some, there's some people there that are experienced with that. And again, I'm always over here in Cotter, uh, you know, if they had any questions, obviously, but I think they should be pretty good there. Um, and yes, they do. Newport runs a 24 volt battery on the NK 180. The NK300 is a 36 volt battery. So that is very, very important to note there. John. Hey, John, what's going on, man? John, um, he's the one that we did that, uh, that I did that podcast with. That was probably one of the, if you haven't checked uh, John's uh, podcast over on his uh, Facebook page, definitely do so. That was probably one of the just most relaxed, enjoyable conversations I've had. Uh, if you don't, you don't follow John over there, and I think it's on YouTube as well. Definitely check his uh, check his channel out. I really don't. Cr um, Crooked Creek, definitely not. I mean, yeah. him and I, we've gotten some good rain here, and on Crooked Creek, we there were areas we dragged a little bit. Yeah, and you know, it's when you're talking about motors, even the cheapest motor is a pretty good investment you're going to be knocking that thing over on some stuff. And the river, even when it's still, the river's still going to be carrying you a little bit. Uh, and if it's stagnant, you definitely, I wouldn't want to put a motor in there because you're going to be getting all those algae blooms up in there. Uh, I, I just don't see the need in it. Um, now, if you're wanting to go upstream, yeah, but still most of your good paddling kayaks are going to be able to handle it unless you're an, in a high water situation there. Just personal, just personal preference. Well, John, we're late too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about an hour late because, you know, fishing. Fishing is life these days. <laughs> and thank you, John. I, I just, I was kind of drawing a blank. Uh, his 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 live stream and podcast is called Beyond the Paddle. Uh, so again, I definitely enjoyed my conversation with John there. You can check it out over on his channel if you'd like to. Cody and Garfield. Cody and Garfield. Man, I'm either upgrading to unlimited or tight. Man. Yeah. Um, depends on what you want to do with it. Um, you know, the Titan X, the Titan X is really heavy, but it's one of my favorite kayaks. And we have been selling a mess out of those things. The 12.5, again, at 172 pounds. I just, that's, that's a point I make a lot. Uh, it's not a big deal to me, but if somebody, it just depends on how you're hauling it. If you're trailering it, if you're dipping it in the water and launching it from a trailer, no issues whatsoever. That's the most stable kayak I've ever stood in. And I've stood in a lot of them. Uh, the Unlimited is great. If you're wanting to motorize it, you may like the Unlimited a little bit better, or maybe even the PWR. Uh, they've got both of those there to look at. And then if you want the pedal drive in addition to some, you know, again, uh, the Titan X is, you know, they fix the dry, they fix the wet hull in the Titan X, uh, you know, the, the water retention, uh, you know, in the deck by the uh, pedal drive, they fix that. Uh, they finally fixed the rudder system. They've got the little spring loaded rudder that is just phenomenal. I, I will say one thing. If, uh, if you want to get your wife into kayak fishing, um, don't have her carry around a tight necks. If you don't want her to go with you, oh, yeah. then absolutely yeah. get her to help you with it. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're a trailer, if you're trailering, um, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, now again, you gotta, you still gotta decide whether you want you, you know, it, it, it's, it's literally almost what it, it is double the kayak as far as weight goes. Um, I like the open deck space of the unlimited, but, Man, the the seat on the seat on the Titan X, in my opinion, is a little bit of a higher back. Um, call me crazy; it's the same Millennium seat, but it just no, seems it is. It, it's yeah, high it's, back. it's the same um, same Millennium seat, but just a little bit different. And it's got a really heavy duty metal frame underneath it. It's more like your boat 
Millennium seats. Oh yeah, yeah. Where yeah. your new canoes have, a, they do have a shorter back. And I love the, the Titan X. The ergonomics on it are just phenomenal. So you've got the seat, you've got you know you got your hip, you got your knee, and you got your ankle. So you're pedaling down instead of uh, if you see a lot of kayaks that are pedal driven, you almost see people laying backwards and pedaling it, and that is just if you're fishing, that's not where you want to be. You want to be able to sit straight up and pedal your kayak. And Native does a great job of that, in my opinion. You come to Arkansas, you're buying a kayak, John. I tell you that right now. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, uh, just come to Cotter. You're, you'll love it. It's a beautiful area, a lot of water. We can go out fishing there and Man, I got a lot of boats here, uh, a lot of boats. We got an Old Town shipment coming. We're definitely going to be doing some content on Old Town as we get them. I think the first one we're going to be doing is the Old Town Sportsman PDL 120, I believe. Um, and just real quick, guys, if you haven't already, hit that like button. That kind of gets this out, gets it out to the public if you like the content. Um, those of you that are subscribed, thank you so much for this year. Uh, we just surpassed 7,000 subscribers uh this actually today uh so definitely appreciate that if you if you watch the videos if you enjoy the content we definitely appreciate you i'm, I'm humbled by this year um in february it marks the year you know my year anniversary of making content out there and it's just it's it's surpassed my expectations i really just did it to uh to get a good source of information i had access to all of this stuff and uh Again, I'm I'm always going to use my platform to say thank you for that, and uh, it's it's I enjoy doing it still. So definitely don't look at uh, slowing down anytime soon. Um, yeah, I believe it's five. It I'm looking five hundred, five hundred, and then yeah, you take that one seventy two. Um, you know, now don't get me wrong, the new canoe series unlimited. Just full disclosure the higher weight capacities are with the scupper plugs in. So no other kayak company advertises that as adding to the weight capacity, even though it does. The Titan X does come with the scupper plugs. So keep that in mind as well. That's not something that I just like harping on too much. Um, I'm a heavy guy. I'm 270. I'm 6'5". I carry a lot of gear with me. We've, ha we've got pro staff guys that put motors and batteries on this thing and there's no issues whatsoever so while it's something to really uh, it's something to pay attention to the weight capacity i wouldn't i don't know that i would focus too much on it uh now take it out demo it if you can again if you you know i me getting me getting in it i never felt like i was anywhere near uh reaching anywhere close to the capacity of that kayak there but again, you know, I know Bonafide and Native and even Old Town has kind of taken a little black eye to that. Me personally, props to them for being upfront about it because I know uh, there's, there's, there's companies out there that you're kind of believing what they're saying. We've asked all of our manufacturers uh, on how they do weight capacities. That's probably going to be a video for another time there, obviously, but it's, you know, it's it's something to look at, but I don't know that I would make it my sole decision on the Titan X. Uh, man, that thing is just, it, it's a boat. It is a boat. Uh, and again, me being as stable, uh, or my sea legs aren't the best. I stood and filmed from that platform, and I just, I absolutely loved it. You're getting two questions. We're getting two questions that are similar here, the PWR versus the Titan 12 5X. I, so here's my thing on the, the the PWR. The PWR gives you the ability to build it incrementally. Unless you're really, really wanting the pedal drive, um, the PWR is phenomenal. And you can throw a motor on it later. You can, you know, the Bonafide sells a, uh, it, it's a, it's a mounting kit. It's basically everything but the motor and the battery. It's all the wiring, the plugging, the plates, everything, even the quick release puck. Uh, so again, you know, I, I like, I like kayaks that you can build incrementally, but getting both of those, you're getting a great, great foundation underneath you. That's always where I steer people is 
you don't have to get the motors and all the bells and the whistles immediately. Get your foundation. If you're building a house, you want that foundation to be absolutely just bar none, the best you can get. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I've noticed about the Titan X series, though, is it does it. And I, and I could go ahead. Um, I, I could be wrong on this, of course, but it just seemed like it was very, very uh, even more sturdy. I haven't had any problems with the new canoe, but I have noticed that they've done some changes to it. Nothing crazy, but uh, their hardware, even their their wing knobs uh, that attach it to it. Uh, a lot of the problems they had with the Frontiers and the Unlimiteds before was sliding the seat on the gear track. Your that T bolt is hitting the bolts. I don't know if they changed their gear track or changed the depth of their uh, their T bolt, but it seems like the seats slide forward. I know that's not what you're asking there, but uh, we haven't had any issues with the new canoe seats. Honestly, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Of course, uh, it's the same plastic buckle that is pretty much industry wide, in my opinion, but. Um, the one thing about new canoe is you get free parts for life that there are some limitations on that, obviously, but it's pretty much all your fittings, all your attachments, gear track, anything like that. Uh, and really that's, that's one of the more unique, uh, warranties out there in my opinion. What's going on USA? How's it going, buddy? Yeah. Um, it really depends. Now, if uh, it just, again, depends on what you want to do with it. If I'm putting a motor on a kayak, personally, I'm either going to go the PWR or the New Canoe Unlimited. Um, the, and the only reason I say that is if you're putting a motorized, you're, you're motorizing the kayak, that's going to be your primary source of propulsion. Typically, I, you know, you're spending a lot of money for that pedal drive, whether you're on Hobie or Native or Jackson or anything. And to me, I like the option that they do. So when they came out with the Titan 12.5X at, at uh, ICAST, a lot of people were asking, well, what if I want to, you know, you got all these motor mounts on it. What if I put a motor on it? I don't want to spend the money on the, the propel drive. They literally a couple of weeks later came out with that PWR. So that had been in the background ready to uh, unleash. It kind of gives you two different needs from the same company, really. But uh, that's, I love the foot control steering on the rudder. Me personally, I think that's a big game changer. If you're doing a bow mount trolling motor, you can just steer it with your feet, just keep it straight. What's going on, Mike? Let's see. Slayer Max 10. Yeah. Um, the Slayer Max is a great kayak. And I really feel like the Slayer Max and the Titan, just a standard Titan, the, the OG Titan, if you will, I feel like I've kind of been left behind a little bit by all the craze with the Titan X. And it gives you a really it, really good price point on a really great kayak. If you're not wanting to motorize it and you like the propel drive, the Slayer Max and the Titan, you know, the, the just the standard Titan series, it's the same pedal drive. Uh, it just, you know, not all the not all the weight either, so... Definitely glad to hear you like it so far, though. So with price, um, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, there, there is wiggle room, uh, or at least with us. Now, your, um, your, it depends on the kayak, you know. So in order as I say that is, you know, if it's something that's really hot, it's it, it, supply and demand. You know, if we don't have a whole lot of them, which we typically do, but if it's something we're really needing to get rid of, yeah, we're going to, we're going to wheel and deal. You can only advertise a, cer a certain price though. So typically if you're in the store, if you're in your paddle shop, that's going to be where, you know, someone can maybe help you out a little bit. But as far as advertising a sale price, we're actually restricted on a lot of that and they call it the MAP policy. It's the minimum advertised price, which is typically going to be the MSRP from the manufacturer. So just know that if you see it, it should be, unless it's a previous year's model, it should be standard all across the board. Uh, if they're not doing that, and, and it depends on the manufacturer too, uh, if somebody is advertising a much lower price, there's usually something to it 
like a previous year's model or even even before like a 22 or something personally right now the unlimited 10 if you're looking in that size um the titan x makes a 10 and a half foot version uh, a lot of people have talked about the size of the battery box so if you're motorizing it that might leave you uh, some modifications needed but uh, for 10 and 11 foot for putting a motor the u10 really is kind of where it's at in my opinion uh, again you're probably going to want a rudder with it but they sell a foot controlled rudder uh, where it's got it's just one pedal so forward and you know uh, you know, the toe and heel is right and left, uh, but it's just bought an Outback and waiting for weather. Man, the Outback, in my opinion, is the best all around fishing kayak, you know, pedal drive fishing kayak. Uh, I was on a pro angler for a year and I loved it, but, and there's people around here that do Outbacks on the White River here. They do it out on the lake. You can do it's got the retractable transducer mount. You have the the H rail system on the Outback, and it's got the little gear track on top of the H rail, which the Pro Angler does not have. In my opinion, that's Hobie's best all around kayak, and really just they just keep improving that thing. So th I I think you're going to absolutely love that. What's going on? Hey Dan, I appreciate you coming and joining us, man. Hey. <laughs> How you liking that? How you liking that new boat, Raj? <laughs> um, the the new canoe, in my opinion, is going to be more stable and better paddling. That is not in any way knocking the Jackson Cusa by any means. The Jackson Cusa, I wish they would bring that back. Uh, we actually saw we ran into four other kayakers. <laughs> Three of them yep. were the original Jackson Cousas, yep. and my my heart just warmed just looking at that. Yep. Uh, and they were all they were all in the rockfish color. No, there were two in rockfish, which is a red, red and, and gray and black. Gray and, black yeah. and then there was one in Battleship, which is gray and blue and black. Yeah, and uh, and then we had we saw a mayfly. So there were yeah three uh, three uh, four kayaks, two couples. two two couples, and two kayaks that just. Now the Mayfly was meant as a kind of a fly fishing platform. We live uh, the the town that we live in, Cotter, is self proclaimed trout fishing capital of the world. So uh, you know it, we've always done well on that platform. USA, not the world. USA, well, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, I just I wish they'd bring it back because in my opinion, uh, Jackson needs to bring back a lighter weight throw and go river fishing kayak. I love the Kusa X, don't get me wrong, but at 100 pounds, you know, today's trip, getting it to and from the water, it just, it's going to get to a point where your boat is heavy enough to where you're going to find a reason not to use it on certain days. And sometimes the best fishing trips are those last minute, hey, you want to go fishing? Let's go. Uh, you know, the heavier kayak gets is it kind of, you're like, man, I'd like to go fishing, but man, I really don't want to load that thing up. And I don't, you know, again, the Kusa X is phenomenal. I, I've actually taken the Kusa X on Crooked Creek mm -hmm. and it, it handles great. The draft on it is so shallow and it handles like a much, much lighter kayak. But man, that weight is kind of hard. And the Kusa, the original Kusa, I want to say it was like 67, 68 pounds. Uh, they need to get back to that, in my opinion. We were talking about this the other yeah, day. Yeah, uh, because uh, the uh, a lot of your other motors have that kill switch. Um, I'm sure there is. I haven't. Uh, I haven't experienced that. Yeah, um, and we've all seen those videos, those fail videos, where you got a boat going in circles out there in the lake, and someone in the water. Um, yeah, I, to my knowledge, there's not. But we're just we're pretty new in being a motor guy dealer, so. Uh, that's definitely something I'm going to look into personally, because to me, that's a safety issue. Um, you know, if, if someone falls out of the boat, because you can you can get to going pretty fast. And if you turn that thing too sharp and you're in a high seating position, if you're not ready for it, it can throw you out. We were talking about that the other day yeah. um, for a visual is he was talking about with 
always wearing that thing around his neck because he's like, I don't want to be in the middle of the lake going, I lost my boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, if you get a chance to try the new canoe flint, try it, man. Uh, it, they, it's gone down $100. They've got a better seating position on that. They've even added more deck padding to it. That's a really solid kayak. Um, there is a, I think it's called Seek One. Uh, the guys on YouTube, they're sponsored by New Canoe. They do outdoor, they do fishing, but they do hunting and all that. And they're on all the New Canoe lineups. They show, uh, and the reason I say that is they have a lot of videos with the New Canoe Unlimited and the New Canoe Flint in action. Uh, and I definitely I always like throwing people that way because, you know, just like on the Crescent Sholey that we did, you know, we did a really quick kind of paddle around. We tried the stability and the maneuverability, but Eric with Itching to Fish, uh, it was his kayak that he let us borrow, which definitely a big shout out to him. But on his channel, you can see him paddle that thing all over the place. He's got several different videos of him fishing off of it, how he rigs it up. So again, you know, take what I say with a little bit of grain of salt there on the Crescent Choli, because we might have, we spent a few hours on it. Again, you know, he's he's been on it for probably a little over a year and used it heavily, so... I kind of did, but I need to do, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I need to do another one. Um, my, my favorite is the, is a uh, uh, Stolquist. The problem with that is, is uh, Stolquist was kind of owned by, or kind of, kind of, they were uh, owned by a company called Aqualung. Aqualung has moved their manufacturing overseas and they have completely halted Stolquist. So Stolquist, I, I use the Keeper. The reason I like Stolquist is the way it fits. It's got a strap that kind of goes across your chest and under your rib cage. And it, a kayak fishing vest is, or just a kayak vest is meant to sit low. And that held it. That keeps it from, uh, keeps it from riding up like a lot of your, you know, the, I call them the boat coats. Just looks like a coat. You sit down and I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's riding up on you. Um, NRS is another really good one. The NRS Chinook is ever a lot of people's favorite. They stopped making the Chinook, but they they've made a, another variation of it. So they still make a lot of really good ones. That's probably going to be where we go in the future uh, for our PFDs. But as of right now, we have a couple of NRS vests, but most of them are Stolquist. Stolquist also does a really good lineup of women's vests as well, which we have always sold. Um, you know, Christina here uses a Stolquist also. And like I said, the fit on it, the way it holds it down low, I've got pockets, I've got tether points. Uh, but NRS or Stolquist, if you can find Stolquist, that would be really where I'd go. Um, I'm so comfortable in mine that I went to go park my car today after we unloaded kayaks. And I'm literally in driving my car around yeah. with my PFD on. And we're bank fishing uh, with our with <laughs> yeah. our vests on because you got yeah. all the storage. Uh, we've had our life vest for three years now. And it fits better than the day we yep. bought it. Uh, mm -hmm. That the, the Stolquist is kind of patty, uh, but they break down over time and it'll form to your body. And man, I just I just like the fit personally. Honestly, um, I've seen some of the manual deployed parking poles. I think those are nice. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a simpler setup if you don't want to have power or kind of minimize some of the stuff you have on your kayak. Uh, we don't use it a lot around here because a lot of our lakes are uh, pretty deep uh, sloping rock. You know, there's not a lot of places, you know, we don't have a lot of flats in other words, uh, skinny water, a little bit of different story. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of dig them. Uh, I saw somebody that had a really simple setup. I can't for the life of me remember the brand that they use, but it was, I wouldn't have any problem with it at all, personally. We used to be a power pole dealer. We just didn't really have a whole lot of interest uh, from our customers on it. So we kind of moved away from it a little. Yeah. Um, now, Old Town and uh, Hobie does it too. A lot of their stuff is rebranded. So like Hobie, uh, they have their own line of PFDs, but the Hobie PFDs are, they're simply Stolquist with the Hobie logo on it. Um, and again, I think they're the same price too, which is kind of strange with Hobie. <laughs> uh, Hobie tried to get us to buy some kayak cushions with their brand on it. And 
it was like, I think $30 higher than the retail on the standard ones. And we get the custom ones with our logo on them. So, and they don't charge us any extra for that. So as I was kind of the big joke is uh, Hobie's kind of like the Harley of, uh, of kayaks They They make some really, really quality products, but man, they're, they, they, they charge for them too. It, it can be. Um, now it, again, depends on the water and the application there, but, uh, the 10, it just, it doesn't track very well. It, I think it's a true 10 footer. So it's about, it's about, it's almost a foot shorter than the U10. And a lot of people with the same width as the Frontier 12 and that much shorter, two foot shorter, it's, it's almost like paddling around a rounded square. Um, it just, it's not the best tracking. We very rarely order them just because they, people are just going to go to the 12 footer anyway. And there's not a huge price difference between the two. You could probably find some really good deals on them used, though. So if you find a good price on it, it again, you got a swivel seat, you got some room, you can motorize it. You have a flat transom also, just like all the new canoes. But yeah, the, with the U10 coming out, it, it, I think it's going to be the clock's going to be ticking on the Frontier series, in my opinion. Man, and I and I understand. Like I said, man, uh, we're we're about an hour late starting here, and I definitely appreciate all you guys coming on here again, talking about the kayak fishing tournaments. Best thing to do, in my opinion, meet these groups in person, get a feel for them. You're going to know really quick just from talking to the people, meeting. You know, a lot of times they'll do meetups, uh, and sometimes you know they'll invite you out to a tournament go out there and kind of kind of meet the group that you're going in with because these are going to be the people that you're going to be going out with usually on a monthly basis and get somebody that's got a little bit of a sense of community too. So uh, those are usually the best groups in my opinion. So that's, that's another thing with the PFD uh, discussion. So inflatables, I know a lot of people like inflatables. There's just, there's too many variables for me personally. Um, they are very low profile. The Chinook, a lot of people love the Chinook. I'm one of those that don't really care too much for it, but they use a little bit that humpback uh, design. If you got a frame seat, especially a high back one, it just, you ever get like a mosquito in your ear or a gnat in your ear? And it just, that's what it feels like to me, having your, that, uh, that high, uh, that high back kind of going against the top of your seat. And it, sometimes it'll push you forward a little bit. That's the only reason I was kind of against those, but uh, man, people that have them, they love them because of that mesh back. It just, especially in hot weather. I have not, I've seen them online. Um, I, I, I kind of dig that. I kind of dig that. Uh, we have just become an old town dealer. So uh, we're just, we're starting out kind of small with them personally, but you know, it's just that I, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, I'm sure it'll go really good, but, uh, you know, a lot of these kayak companies are doing some of these little, I know, uh, Jackson just shipped us some of these, uh, limited edition storm with a, and they come with an Orion cooler. That's just kind of a promotional thing. Uh, but it's kind of that light blue and black blend, but yeah, those, um, was it that firecracker or it's, it's that real, you saw those that, you know, the, the green, white and red or green and orange. Yeah. It's, it's loud, but it looked really, really good. Hey, Charles, what's going on, man? Kayak Bass Anglers of Arkansas. Next tournament is April 6th at Lake Atkins. Tove, yeah. Thoughts on the auto manual? Yeah. So the, 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 the auto or the, the manual ones, the one thing that I will caution people on using the manual PFDs is when you buy them, they don't come armed. So it comes to that little canister and it's usually inside the vest, but there's a little pocket. There's a little threaded insert and that canister, you have to screw it in. There's so many people that buy those that put them on and go fishing that they don't arm them. And when they jump in the water, they're pulling that, they're, they're pulling the, the tab to arm it and it doesn't arm. So that's what I mean by there's a lot of variables. It, it In the auto ones, you're going to get wet a little bit just from paddling and the last thing you want to do is worry about that thing just inflating up in your face. Uh, but the, the, the manual ones are fine. Just there's some of them that do a little bit better job than others. I know boat board. I don't know if you saw those, the, the ones that go around, it's a belt. There's just too many things to do. And if you're in an emergency situation, 
I never, I always tell people never assume consciousness if in an emergency situation, you hit your head, the last thing you're going to do in a panic situation is you're fumbling around trying to find the handle. Now, if you just fall out of your kayak or something, yeah, it's fine. But uh, I just, I'm not a huge fan of those just because if it's an emergency, which you want your PFD to uh, help you out on, it, it's just, it's a little bit different on that. Fire tiger. Yeah. Well, guys, we're here at an hour. Um, probably going to go ahead and shut this down, let you guys get to bed. Uh, as always, we're going to be doing this every Sunday. We're going to start doing some guests. I'm going to start lining those up. And uh, eventually we may look at doing a different day. I think we're kind of um, we're kind of conflicting with a couple of people that, uh, you know, we just don't want to do that with, uh, uh, namely Bearded Dad Fishing. So uh, I think they we did that last week. Uh, those of you that tuned into that, uh, definitely appreciate that. But, uh, but guys, we look forward to uh, this year coming up. Again, uh, thank you for supporting us on the videos. Thank you for watching the videos, liking the videos. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. And again, we look forward to bringing you more in the future as we do on more of these live streams. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week, guys. Thank have you. A, have a great week, everyone. <laughs>